Hello, welcome to the world of Word. Coming up, another word in your attic. And if you enjoy this, visit our Patreon to find out more about our exclusives and our general work of national importance. The link is in the notes below. And now, on with the show. Word in your attic, a Zoom with a view. We're thrilled to be joined for another Word in Your Attic by broadcaster, best-selling author, and fellow sufferer at Tottenham Hotspur, <laughs> Simon Mayo. Simon. Simon, great to you. see you. Gentlemen, how are you? Very good to see you. We're Working all right. Very well and healthy. I love the way the light is coming in on Mark's, the side of Mark's face there. It's look, you're looking like a Renaissance painting. I, it's terrible, isn't it? Like a Vermeer. I should be in a basement. <laughs> That's right. I can't do much about it, actually, because I haven't got a laptop. This is my machine. But look, we're very envious of you because you've obviously been on holiday, which, which we were, were dead in our week with envy. That hasn't happened to us. You've been in, was it Suffolk? You've tweeted it's a lovely good, yeah, picture I'm of actually, a can of beer and a, and a Robert Harris book. Yes, that's right. I, I've actually come home today, but I am going back on I'm on, on holiday for another two weeks. So oh, I am oh, still great. on holiday, but I'm breaking the holiday to talk to you guys because I oh, couldn't think of anything better. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so you we're picked so the touched. right weather to do it. it, it definitely, today. Yes, that is true. So, uh, so, uh, how long have you been there? You've been there two weeks already. Um, I've been on holiday one week, got two more weeks still to go. Uh, right. We came back, family complications, and then we're going to go right. back. Okay. Yeah, we're going to go back tomorrow. But um, I was, uh, I've got half a record collection in Suffolk and half a record collection here. And I was thinking, but I need some tat for the guys. Uh, so all right. I, <laughs> so okay. I've just grabbed some stuff. I have no idea the kind of thing. I have watched some of your other. Uh, shows, but you know, I'm surrounded by well, first of all shows. Before we, before, you we any, before we go any further, Simon. Oh yes, yes. Yeah, we've got to plug your book, um, which uh, just out now at all good books, bookshops, and online and whatever. Yes, this is it, your your second kind of grown up fiction. Is that right? Is that fair to say? It's a yeah, it's a thriller um, with swearing. Which I mean, to be honest, the kids yeah. books I wrote were thrillers as well. When I think about it, and the YA book was a thriller. Um, it's just that this is a more, this is, I guess, is a more contemporary, conventional thriller. Yes. So uh, it comes out on Thursday, the twentieth, which is this current coming Thursday, I think. And it's right, based. It's based with a, in an investigative news team in a news agency, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, all sorts of murders and things take place. All sorts of murders. Seven murders on page one. And that's right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 you were off to a rollicking start. <laughs> so well, you okay. pitched it. Okay, so it all out, yeah. <laughs> so, well, the rest of the book, my mate, my journalist who's called Femi Madden, uh, she kind of works, she's a news agency journalist. So she spends, she quits her job. She's kind of fed up with her job anyway. But seven murders uh, turn out to be the, the end, really, because she knows all the people who were killed. Are they? They are the investigative team at her news agency. They're, so the news agency are a bit like Bloomberg or Reuters. I made up a news agency just because I thought it was safer. Yes, <laughs> so, yes. You know. probably, um, wise, probably wise. Yeah. So she's so so um, the yeah. So she did. So seven people are killed. She goes to all seven funerals, and at the end of the seventh funeral, I know this is not a line to tell you guys, but at the, a lot of people haven't got it but anyway so at the end of the seventh funeral she comes back to her car and there's a typewritten old-fashioned typewritten note which says you don't you don't have you, you don't don't need you a weatherman don't, don't need a weatherman yeah. yeah, you quoted my book well <laughs> my book. you don't need a weatherman to know which way the wind blows so there's then a dispute um so the editorial process went um in fact david has the same editor so he said everybody everyone knows that's dylan everyone knows that's dylan and i said i think you'll be surprised yeah, at the vast number right. of people who <laughs> don't know it's dylan so anyway but it's a dylan lyric which has a lot of political significance um so yeah so it all it all takes off from there so you, nobody suggested that you ought to clear that with Dylan's publisher or anything like that. No, I'm sorry. I'm not trying that's to get a, you in trouble. That's a great that. time to throw that into the mix. Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> I was really not trying to do that. But well, normally, I'm, you know. I, I am aware of the issue because I did a, a YA book called Blame, and there's a key plot point which revolves around Daddy was a bank robber by The Clash. And on literally the day the book was go, it was being printed, so they had, you know, pressing the pressing the button to actually print the things. I got a phone call from the, my editor saying the Clash's lawyers haven't approved this, and I said, "But it's 
<laughs> it's kind of the title. In fact, I, I seem to remember thinking that uh, Daddy was a, in brackets, Bank Robber was the title. Anyway, it wasn't. Bank Robber was the title. And you can use titles, but you can't use a lyric. So, and I said, The Clash aren't going to sue because they're The yeah. Clash, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Oh, and, oh, yeah. And, they, and they said, It's not up to The Clash, it's up to The Clash's lawyers who are still lawyers. So um, I, had to re, I had to rewrite uh, in my head this crucial plot line um which revolves around discovering that someone's father was a bank robber but anyway so with that in mind i was slightly uncertain about the dylan lyric uh the dylan lyrics are notoriously expensive um yeah. but there is a defense here which is that um that particular line was used in, in, in fact it's explained it's explained in the book i don't want to reveal too much but um there is a a, a terrorist group in america well, there is military, a precedent yeah. there is a precedent and they used they used this line about the weatherman because they become an organization called the weathermen um and they use violence and so on so yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's the and actually that that lyric is the title for one of their discussion papers so therefore i thought the fact that it's been used as a headline in a newspaper means it's not just a Dylan lyric. It now no, it's public, public domain public. now. It's public domain. It's fine. <laughs> You're in the clear. Simon, 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 Mark and I will be the last people to, to stop you doing anything like that because we're great believers in the, uh, in the school of thought, which is don't ask for permission, ask for forgiveness. You know? <laughs> yes, and if, Your Honour. If, if you ask for permission from a lawyer, there is only ever one answer, and the answer is no. Yeah. Whereas once you do it, nobody's going to bother at all. We used to find not that with libels on magazines. If you thought you were worried about a libel, if you rang up the lawyer, your lawyer, and said, do you think we should take it out? They'd always say yes, no matter what it was. Because yeah. of course they didn't want to say, yeah, leave it in, because then, yeah. then they'd be the one blamed for any repercussion. You, you, never, so you, never find find never lawyer said, you never find a lawyer who said, seems all right to me. Yeah, fine. <laughs> it just doesn't happen. Uh, I know. Lawyer. So uh, anyway, I'm, I'm, hoping, I'm hoping that it's OK. I think the defense It'll be that, fine. Yeah. Thank you. It'll be, it'll be fine. Take my take my word on it. It'll be fine. And that's that's out sort of next week or something like that. And yeah. it's terrifically good. Yeah. Thoroughly recommend it. So well, do you enjoy the, the onto the tat? Yeah, go on, go on, go on. Bring bring us your tat. You've come back to town to show us your tat. Where do you start? <laughs> Where do you begin? Okay. Is it possible? I've done a little edition of your stack body game. Oh, 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 can I start with that? Yep, yes. Go on. Is, is it okay to do it on this particular version of your of your? Yeah, no, go on. Fire away. Oh, it's fine. Uh, fire yes, away. Yes, yes, and let, yeah. it, this only won't work unless you've already done Christian metal bands from the start. Oh, no, we haven't. No, we no, haven't. We haven't. Okay. It's a virgin territory to come so, on. Go so on. these, so there, is, for you, same rules apply. Five yeah. bands. Four of them are Christian metal bands from the states. And one I've made up. Okay. okay. All right, go on. Okay. Uh, okay. Band number one, Thousand Foot Crutch. <laughs> right. Yeah, go on. <laughs> Band number two, As I Lay Dying. Uh -huh. Yeah. Band number three, Lust Control. Lust. Lust, lust Control. Lust, lust Control. Okay, that's very good. That's great. <laughs> Band number four, the Church of Our Lady of the Perpetual Harp. Yep. And band number five, the Revolutionary Army of the Little Infant Jesus. Oh my goodness. Sake. That is really, really good. Okay. I'm so thousand, can, I, thousand can I throw in one that I think is definitely a ringer? Yeah. Thousand Foot Crutch uh, is, sorry, not a ringer. That's real because um, that, that's the kind of insane thing that they would say and it sounds like something you would make up to throw us off the scent so they are definitely real i think and i think as i lay dying dave that sounds real to me that says it's from a it's poem, a kind of to, 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 from a poem it's, a, it's possibly a biblical quote so we're left with lust control which i think is probably L real too let's get this straight is it lust control it's lust L -U -S -T. control l-u-s-t and then control two words lust control so we're left with the Revolutionary Army. And the, what was the fourth one again? So the fourth one is Church of Our Lady of the Perpetual Harp. And the fifth one is the Revolutionary Army of the Little Infant Jesus. Okay, I've got my answer. You go first, Dave. 
Ah, oh, I'm, I'm at sea here. I'm going to go for the Revolutionary Army of the... I, I am too. Because I think it's slightly piss-taking. It's slightly <laughs> blasphemous, I would have thought. It possibly. is. And if they okay. really are Christian, I think they'd be, they'd be risking <laughs> yeah. the slings and arrows of their know. audience. Are, go on. Are we wildly wrong? Go on. Well, the thousand-foot crutch definitely exists. As I lay, as, as I lay dying, uh, were a big <laughs> Christian metal band until their lead singer... Uh, was given a six-year prison prison sentence for hiring a hitman to kill his ex-wife. Anyway, so or trying to kill. Anyway, um, Lust Control were a big '80s uh, power metal what Christian band. Who I've never I've never heard of any of these guys. I just I'd, yeah. I'd look them up. Um, the Revolutionary Army of the Little Infant Jesus. I heard on Andy Kershaw uh, many many moons ago. Oh, and so they, they're, they're real. They're real. Uh, they're real. So, and so who's that Liverpool's with? You that win. leads us with the Church of Our Lady of the Perpetual Harp. <laughs> That's really good. Genius. You've beaten, you've beaten the panel, Simon beaten Mayer. the panel completely. That's fantastically pick, impressive. Pick a prize, anything off the top shelf. Cuddly toy, goldfish, yeah. anything you like. Marrow, Take it. jar of chutney, all <laughs> yours. I could, I could pick an album from behind David's head. All oh, right. Okay, what do you want? Well, why don't you just pick one? Cool. It's like oh, a brand tub. Uh, I'm going to give you a copy of Boz Gags, a slow dancer. Oh, okay. Well, that's, very, that's, 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 very, that's very kind. Next, next time I see you. <laughs> uh, I didn't okay. dare do that with mine. Heavens. Yeah. <laughs> I came to mine the other day and I realised I still had a, a solo album by the Glitter Band. Post Gary, <laughs> of course. But it's just the of Glitter course. Band. So is, it, is, it, is it acceptable, do you think, to listen to Rock and Roll Part 2? Well, I think so. Well, that's different. Right, you know, it was a good record. Uh, it's a good record, yes. It was a good record. Uh, what I mean, it was a good record. And, uh, you know. I know, what do you think? Uh, I, well, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't think you can. Yeah. Playing it on the radio is probably a slightly different thing. Yeah. Because, you know, that's, uh, you're doing it on behalf of an organisation, aren't you? You're broadcasting all of it. Yeah. So, you, can't, well, you never hear it. it. <laughs> yes, it could be, it could be. So, where do you where do you begin with your tat sign? Okay, have you got the first the... record you ever bought or anything like that? Oh, I mean, first of all, I've got oh. this. Oh, oh wonderful. wow! So Was Eggton that House? Egg, egg, Eggton House. Eggton House. So so when, uh, when I did all the so all my Radio One shows came from uh, Eggton Studios, so Eggton Five, and when they when they demolished the studios, I went in and I stole them. So that's the on-air right. sign that was up above the door, and that was in front of the door. So this right. used, this place used to be my spare bedroom before, you know, current yeah. times. And now uh, my spare bedroom is known as Egton 5. Oh, I see. Fantastic. Uh, darling, I'm going to Egton 5. Yes. <laughs> uh, maybe some time. <laughs> Very good. So Bates, Bates was in Egton 4 always, then I was in Egton 5. Uh, and that's you know that's and I would look I would look through the glass as um, the cigar great clouds of smoke and um, well, well, did, did, did Bates broadcast while smoking a cigar? Yeah, I mean once upon a time before they before they you know decreed that such a thing was not good in, in general. Yes, there were clouds clouds of smoke. You have to feel for the person going to the studio after it. <laughs> yeah, well that was Steve Wright who would go in and. Because uh, then Gary Davis would be back in Eggton 5 and Steve Wright would be back in Eggton 4. And I think Steve always used to go in early, so he had to, to, to clear up after, after Simon. Right, yes, 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 yeah. Anyway, um, so, anyway so, uh, so that's that. Um, just because it's de rigueur. Um, oh, 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 how fantastic. Uh, which yeah. issue is, is it, that? Is it the specials? Is, I can't see. No, it's, uh, it's the beat. Oh, it's the beat, yes. Yeah. Uh, David is... Uh, features okay. editor and gets oh, a real right. pasting okay. you get a real pasting on the letters page david for oh a user dex's midnight oh, runners oh okay well i like to feel i'm still slanging off dex's midnight runners all these years uh since it hasn't been a problem for them at all you know so i was formerly under the impression that mr hepworth possessed good taste in music that <laughs> is until i read his shameful review of dex's new album blah 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 blah, blah, blah. Uh, anyway uh, you also, on the singles review page, here we go. Right, is that me? Really? Yeah, that's you. Okay. Um, All the Way that's From America is your favourite. I think Joan Armour Oh, that's Joan Armour Trading below. Yeah. 
And, and rather bizarrely, uh, as I've already mentioned, bank robber by The Clash. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. you don't like it. I don't like it. Okay. Well, uh, again, these people about... never worked again. The poison <laughs> pen of Hepworth yeah, yeah. did for their them, careers. I Who are they now? Back to the dull clique here. Yeah. <laughs> but it's but it's still a great read. And I was a, I read I was a disco forty five boy. Oh um, really? So so reading the reading the lyrics of of songs was this wonderful uh, thing. Something which smashed it. Uh, this one you've got both sides of the beat single. You've, uh, David, you've spent a lot of time with the Piranhas. There's a little, uh... Oh, good grief. Oh, wonderful. I think I went with boring the Piranhas. Bob, when they... Boring, boring Bob, Bob Grover, Grover was the, was the <laughs> trumpet playing singer. Yeah. I think I went to Top of the Pops with them. I think I did. How long ago is that issue, Simon? Is that 1980? 1980, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's August, September good. 1980. Oh, but it's still a great 40 thing. 40 years ago. Um, and while we're on while we're on the subject, um, I don't know if you can see this. So this is this is your so it's here. All oh, right, okay. So this is me. This is a breakfast show thing. Is that in Smash Hits? Yes, yeah, it's in Smash Hits. The oh, classic. Wow. Uh, I get up early, so here's an alarm clock shot. BBC <laughs> security man here, looking slightly <laughs> befuddled, uh, yawning, uh, eating toast, possibly. I don't know. That's right. Yeah. This is this is. Diane Oxbury, who sadly passed away last year. Uh, oh, and here's Rick Blacksill, who is now my boss at oh, Power. Oh, yes. Oh, right. <laughs> who went under on top of the pops. That's right. Yeah. yeah Looked like Mick right. Hucknall. Yeah. yeah. But they call him producer Nick here. So anyway, anyway so that's, that's rather lovely. I've got God, I've forgotten that. That's extraordinary. Um, uh, how about this? Oh, good oh God. what's that? Go on. It says, uh, to Simon, with many thanks from Monty Python, always look on the bright side of life, 1991. So it's a ceramic Python foot. <laughs> what, did oh. you do? <laughs> what did you do to, to earn that? Well, basically, always look on the bright side of life was a, was a hit single because we started playing it. Yeah. Uh, it, had, it had been sung in... Um, in, uh, in football grounds and so I think United supporters used to sing it so this is we're going back you know most United supporters don't really remember anything before 1991 but no, when when things weren't going quite so well they used to sing always look on the bright side of life anyway we started playing it on the breakfast show it becomes hit single Eric Idle uh, in fact I, I also I don't know if you can see this. so here's Piers Morgan when he had a proper job doing right. the bizarre <laughs> thing <laughs> okay and there's the Monty Python so there's oh, Eric Idle and me right. uh, so it's a whole thing about saying uh, uh it's off to number one although it didn't he, he went on top of the pops and it went down but uh, so this so that this but Piers, do you remember the bizarre column with Piers? indeed he, I simply do. bed is a classic headline you've got to be honest <laughs> <laughs> simply bed for bringing to me yeah anyway so that so this python thing i just think is one of those um it was the first thing I thought of when I had to deliver tat. I thought, well, well there aren't there are not many Python-esque ceramic feet anywhere. So you see, we've been performing an invaluable social service yes. over the last few months. Because for years, all the people we talked to for years have had bits of junk in their attics that their husband, wife, whoever, has always said, Shouldn't you throw that away? And they've all said, Well, you never know, it might come in. Which and David now, and I, I know David and I both did right. with, with Reckless Eric's uh, uh, promotional brick. I think we've both thrown <laughs> ours away and I really regret it now because before this programme, there seemed to be no need to hang on to these things. But this, now the value has been announced well, internationally. So I don't know how much this is. I mean, I, I don't really have much interest in Bomb the Bass, but you guys will remember when, oh, if there was a proper promotional budget on something. Oh, I only opened this this afternoon. Oh, wow. to, Promoted by Ferret and Spanner, who seemed to run the universe back in the day. Yeah, yeah, so, they did. Yeah. So you get a sticker, CD, cassette, which I haven't taken these out at all ever since. Copy of the face that they're in, and then the rest of it is stickers and an album. Now that is an advertising uh, extravaganza. Um, and I just came across it just because I, I, I keep it as you, you mentioned it about. 
conversations in the family. It's the kind of thing, it's a, this is the way you used to promote a yes. Radio 1 back in the day. Yeah. This is, you know, a stuff would arrive and you would have all of this just to promote one album. Yeah, and, and that was probably specially done for Radio One DJs, wasn't it? Because I can remember, I think yeah. Ferret and Spanner behind a stunt whereby uh, ZZ Top had a record out, and they hired a crane to carry uh, ch ch uh, chicken dinners, didn't they? <laughs> Up to third floor window. Is that true? Yeah, I think so. To promote a ZZ Top record. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty it. impressive, isn't it? <laughs> but that, by that kind of vinyl, uh, vinyl discipline, I have singularly failed to pass on to my offspring. So my, when my daughter went to university a couple of years back, we bought her one of those gramophone record players, you know, with a lid and the spindle with the controlling arm and it would, uh, yeah, yeah. 33, 45 and so on. And, and a, a bunch of old albums and some, and some new albums. And, you know, it was the talk of the corridor. And then she'd been there a few weeks and then I got a phone call and uh, she said, Dad, do you remember going to see Tired Pony, uh, which we went to see at Kentish Town Forum. I always think of it as town and country, but it isn't town and country. Anymore. Yes. Yeah. Um, I said, yes, said, they didn't have a, a woman as the lead singer, did they? Uh, and I, you know, I mean, Tired Pony is this kind of, you know, an occasional band. Peter um, Buck, isn't it? Yes, that's, that's right. right yeah. yeah. And I said, well, not really. And then I could hear the record playing in the background and I kind of worked out what was happening. And I, and I said, OK, just put the phone over to the record player. And she was playing it at 45. So, but, and she'd be listening to this album at the wrong speed, but she quite liked it. You know, she tied <laughs> pony at 45, worked, worked rather well. Um, yeah. So there's this kind of this sense of, of uh, how you treat a piece of vinyl. I think they're, I think they're getting there. But I, I, think the whole, there I think the whole business of playing records at wrong speed is a very, very undervalued area of uh, musical entertainment. Because... Danny Baker was saying to me the other day that there's nothing quite like Nick Drake's Pink Moon played at, is it 78 or 45? I can't remember. One really? of the two. What does it become? A kind of toe-tapping, rug-cutting? It's really absolutely number. extraordinary. Yeah. And I counted, and I think we've talked about this on, uh, on previous pods, Kenny Rogers' Don't Take Your Love to Town. I've heard that. Play, on played at, 30, at 33 is the swampiest, bluesiest sound you have ever heard in your <laughs> life. And so I think somebody on YouTube has got even more time on their hands than us should be doing this right now, deliberately playing records at their wrong speed. Because yeah. it's something that's not forgotten too. I think, I've, I think I've done that Kenny Rogers thing because we bought the, I think my sister might have bought it on Reprise Records. That like yes, light it was. Brown. And very, yes, it yeah. was a very beautiful yeah. label. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Spe speaking of which, um, I, uh, I wanted, I, I got a jukebox downstairs, an old Rockola jukebox, uh, from which I removed this earlier today. Okay. Oh, so this is Sultans of Swing. Sultans of Swing. Oh, right. Yes. So you can see that this is, you can see this a is jukebox one. version. Yeah. So uh, the, the reason I wanted just to pick this out is that, <laughs> I think, mean, you know, you get very boring about this, but the thing is, Dire Straits became that kind of shorthand for, I really yeah. haven't got much taste in music, but I've got, yeah, yeah. you know, brothers in arms and so on. Yeah. But I heard this when I was at university and I was revising for my first year and I was listening to Peel and John Peel championed Songs of Swing. Absolutely. And I remember him yeah. saying, I don't think he's much of a vocalist, but he can certainly play the guitar. So, uh, and I used to listen every night to, to Peel, waiting for him to play Dire Straits, Songs of Swing. And, and then after that, it sort of everything else has taken over and everyone says, says it's naff. But actually, um, and, and the other thing which I'm really boring about is it has to, when you play it on the radio, radio stations, people in, play this version. Don't play the album version, it's different. The compression is different, the lyrics are different. It's a completely different mix. But yep. no one cares. And when Mark Knopfler came into Radio One many years ago, I was, I said, you know, how can we get a CD version of this? And he, he wasn't even slightly interested. So I thought, well, if I can't, in, you know, if Mark Knopfler's not going to be that yeah, bothered. If he's not then... bothered. <laughs> what an amazing record at the time, wasn't it? Incredible. It was. There was nothing like it at all. Though they were no. the writing, as a storytelling exercise about the trad jazz bands who'd been done out of the water by, uh, you know, by, by, by kind of pub rock, really, wasn't it? Yeah, exactly. I, well, I, I, well, I love it. And the B-side, Eastbound Train, is very good. You can see yeah. that's had some serious uh, treatment. 
And that's, the other thing that's been dinked, hasn't it? That's what the, isn't that the expression we use for when yes. they remove, remove the center? It's been dinked. Correct. Correct. Uh, and while, while I have your uh, estimable talents here, this also oh, came out of the jukebox. Oh, right. God, Old yeah. Siam, sir, by Wings. Okay. Is that oh, a B side? Yeah. Yeah. Must be a B side. No, 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 no. The, the B side is sp Skip spin it on. It on. Okay. But on every, I was going to ask you because I'm intrigued because on you can't get on all the kind of online you know you go to Apple Music, this doesn't exist. It's not there. It's like Give Ireland Back to the Irish. You know, it's an it's a Wings track which has sort of been. Oh, was that, that just been written out? Yeah, Stalinist. Uh, you know, um, why has it been written out? I absolutely don't know. I was hoping you guys might know because you're Mark Allen and David. No idea. Uh, is it, no uh, idea. Do, is there some contentious content? I guess there is. No idea. I don't know. Anyway, um, here we go. So one of the things you suggested is I find my the first album I ever bought. Oh, okay. here we go. We love this. So, so uh, I also have it in. My brother persuaded me that all albums should be kept in plastic. Oh yeah, of course, of course. But something that I think now is not not right. But um, so here we go. It cost me two pounds seventeen. I bought it at two pounds seventeen. Two pounds seventeen a... pence. Now is w it a right? Okay, is it a full yeah. price album? Yes. So you're talking about. We ought to be able to date that, shouldn't we? I'm going to say because it was thirty-two and six in about nineteen sixty-four. That's 1970. No, surely. it must be. Yeah, it must no. be late sixties. No, 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 no. Decimal post seventy-one. So uh, it's got to be seventy-two. Okay, Simon, over to you. Oh, right. Okay. Bridge of a Trouble Award. Which was 70? No, it yeah, came out 1970. Oh, did it? So, okay. Yeah. So here's the thing. Um, so that, so this, is, this is the actual copy, um, which I then took home on the bus from Birmingham, you know, reading all the lyrics. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thinking at the time, it's incredibly bendy. Oh, my God, it was. Was that... No, oh, no idea why. Um, is that but, is that a Dynaflex record? Because how would I there was a brief Vogue. I don't know. Uh, most uh, RCA records were Dynaflex. It was a technology to uh, to to where it was very floppy vinyl. I don't know. It may say it on the outside. It may not. Anyway, carry on. So twenty years later, I don't know if you noticed. There. Oh, oh nice! Paul's, both uh, of them. So, so what? Is it so both of them? No, it's, it's just, just Paul Simon. So he was in, so I was doing breakfast at Radio One. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> and he comes in, I, I can't remember why he's in town. Maybe it was for Graceland or anyway, he's, he, he's around. And he, so he comes in on breakfast and we're doing a live <laughs> interview. And I, hand, and I hand him this to sign. So he says to Simon, and it's dated 10th of November, 1990. London, uh, and his plugger told me afterwards he never signs those anymore. So it was only because I handed it to him during the course of the interview. That, <laughs> and uh, he, couldn't, that he, he couldn't have an argument. He couldn't refuse. <laughs> That's <laughs> very clever. That's uh, brilliant. <laughs> he, could, he could refuse. But I have to say, I think it's, it has stood the test of time, and particularly the only living boy in New York stands yeah, out as a yeah. majestic piece of music um which i you know which i love to this day so for a first album but it's, it's, a, it's also amazing is it is he got baby driver on it is that yeah, hazard, yeah. Isn't it? would you would you consider that kind of inspires a hit film doesn't it all those yeah. years later many many you know, years the, later. these these things just live on forever don't they in all kinds of ways and, uh, uh, and you know the, I, the overwhelming I, majority of people who heard that record won't remember it having come out they discovered it years later that's what happens. But I think it's one of those albums that if you listen to it, side one and side two, as a sequence, properly put together, it, it sort of makes sense. It's sort of sit down and listen to this thing, guys, you know, rather than having yeah, something on the yeah. background. No, no, uh, sure, sure. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flip through these very quickly because the only things to be said in... You know, coloured vinyl was a great thing, but these are my favourite pieces of coloured vinyl. So it's Linda Ronstadt. But look oh, at that! There you go. Oh yes. Oh, well, which album's that then? That's blue. That's that's a twelve-inch of uh, Blue Bayou. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I yeah. thought that I was I was so pleased with that. And then, I bought this because I like the track and the sticker on the front says, "The vinyl is red, 
the label is blue it's the motors new single forget about you, there you go. So, <laughs> oh very good very so, good but it was such a thrill uh, it was like an electrifying thing in your record collection that you would say i've got a i've got a red record it just sounds ludicrous now it does really it does. <laughs> it really, really does do you remember when they had those picture picture discs you know there was a curved air had one out yeah. and eventually the picture wore away when you played it and uh, the sound actually i think it affected the sound it sounded dreadful oh it's bound to. yeah just some to idiotic gimmickry but that Kurt, looks mark, good. mark kermode says that the the motors there was a motors album which had photographs of the band on the front but they were considered so ugly that they had to remove the <laughs> to remove them <laughs> themselves <laughs> And that maybe they were the ugliest band of all time, but I think that's oh, unfair. that's fighting talk! Wow, you know, there's a, not while not while the Atlanta rhythm section still draws breath. <laughs> <laughs> not, not while not while not while Uriah Heap still walk the earth. Surely Krabby, not. Crabby oh. Appleton would have something to say Crab, about that. Crabby. <laughs> Although I did go on the road once with this an offshoot of that uh, that group called the Bram Tchaikovsky's Battle Axe. Do you remember that? Yeah. Oh, Bram Tchaikovsky. They weren't yeah, lookers was... either. I'll be honest with you. Um, <laughs> so here the um, I I came across these um, when I was in local radio on vinyl, and I tweeted these pictures of these the other, the other day, and Tim Rice joined in the um, I've got all those on vinyl, and they're all worn out. He, yeah. But it, but these, this CD oh, collection, God, yes, yes, oh, yes, yes, yes. Now you have to be very careful if you're trying to buy them because there's lots of cruising collections. But the, the key thing about these is that they're an hour of radio. So you know, yeah. if you're a radio geek, it's a one, it's ads, it's competitions, it's the weather. <coughs> Excuse me. So 1958 is Jack Carney from WIL St Louis, Missouri. So he's so the new tracks that he's playing. And obviously they've selected a particular show, Chantilly Lace, Rockin' Robin, Get a Job by the Silhouettes, Ten Commandments of Love, Rebel Rouser, Dwayne Eddy, um, Short Shorts, The Royal Teens, Rock and Roll Music, Chuck Berry, uh, Tequila by the Champs, At the Hop, Danny and the Juniors. And hearing it all introduced with the thrill and excitement of new music. This is, look what we found yeah. today. Yeah. Is, it makes for compelling, uh, compelling listening still. I think you put it on and you can just pretend you're listening to American radio from whichever year you, but you know, if you can get hold of them, you should buy them. Definitely. I don't know. Can you still get hold of them? I haven't seen the fridges. I don't know. Um, I think there's an obscure internet shop, which, All right. uh, which my kids found me. Um, All right. Very good. So I, <clears> any I, men I mentioned the John Peel um, earlier with reference to dire straits, but I came across this and, um, there was a whole electro hippies. Electro hippies. So there was a whole oh, section. Was... Yes, that's the that's the sessions, isn't it? Yeah, these are yeah. peel sessions, and um, and they came out. You know, there's a whole bunch of them. There's New Order, Screaming Blue Messiahs, Susie and the Banshees, Joy Division, and so on. But the reason I remember the electro hippies, the peel sessions, is um, I used to do for nine months. I did a, a show that went up to John at, at ten o'clock. So I was doing the, like what became the evening session. And for one day, we had a 40 minute program, shortened, I think, because we were taking Genesis live from Wembley, which obviously John was a huge supporter of. <laughs> um, but the decision of my producer, Phil Ross, was that we were gonna play the same number of tracks in 40 minutes as we would have done in two and a half hours, which is what we'd normally have done. So that every track had to be under two minutes. In fact, some of them were so short, we had to sort of edit them together because there wasn't time to actually queue up a track in uh -huh. time. So the track that we finished with is the track that we this album finishes. I don't know if you can see that. So track nine is called Mega Armageddon Death. Armageddon Death. And it lasts <laughs> one second. Oh, yes, I remember that. Yeah. So, but if you were going up to- He was to very John, proud of that, wasn't he? Yeah, Major yeah, record yeah. breaking moment. That's right. It was one second, but this, this was sequenced up to the pips. At, so it was the pips at 10 o'clock, the news and then John Peel. So you have to talk up to the pips. So I was, it takes longer to say Mega Armageddon Death by the Electro Hippies than it does to actually play the track. Yes. But <laughs> fortunately, I was, you know, we got the timings right and said Electro Hippies by Mega Armageddon Death, played the track into the pips. But it was one of those um, radio 
I don't know, it was like a radio moment that, uh, but, uh, you know, Peel was impressed. You know, he gave me a round of applause. So you always have to uh, cherish those moments. Yeah, that, that yeah no, sure, sure, sure. Remember Paul Gambaccini making a really good point at, at Peel's funeral. He said that he said that Peel had listened to more music, more recorded music than any other human being on the on the planet in history. I thought it was quite interesting, really. Yes. Because up, up till then, you know, it wasn't possible. It just wasn't the amount of stuff to listen to. And he really did listen to stuff pretty much all did, day, you know. I, I did a programme uh, in 1999, which was, at the time, it was the longest radio show ever, 37 hours. It was a comic relief thing. And it meant that I had to put on all the records and all the other presenters came and sat opposite me and I would put their records on. So the Pete Tong section was slightly more trying. Uh, but anyway, Peel... <laughs> came in and he had, he had curated it so carefully, which kind of bears exactly what you're saying, Mark. Uh, and he was very proud of the fact, he, he worked out something that he really liked and he thought that I would really like. And he was absolutely right. And he, he brought in these Tumani Jabati albums. And oh, right. he said, let's, let's put this on, <clears throat> tell me what you think. So I put it on and, uh, and I thought it was fantastic. I still listened to Tumani Jabati, but I, I was just impressed by the fact that he had thought long and hard what is this kind of jock from daytime gonna find appealing anyway but he was, he was, enti he was entirely right so right um, right so uh oh I, ca I came across does this so this is also oh, in my tap file wow now, look at those Dana jackets what a fantastic that? cover that's brilliant isn't it yeah they look on, plum on the, color <laughs> on the back i've written i've written to dad is my dad happy birthday today you're 35 so it makes me realize how long oh my god yes <laughs> so so on here it's got bring me sunshine and so on which uh, which people still love boom who yatta tata also some uh, bum who yatta tata. Yeah. yes also has a track on it which i i think i can say the title but if i played it it would be the end of everything it's called the ambassador of Kaziland, and um <laughs> it breaks so many rules in one in one comedy <laughs> sketch you would be uh, you'd be astonished anyway that was that's enough of my time so you did i think you suggested so, coming up with the best album ever. the greatest record ever yes. made <laughs> yes. over to you that's, now what's that's the, the traditional record ever finale made? i mean but this is preposterous stuff isn't yeah, it? yeah good I mean, okay no fine but you it's see, your look, chance it'll be something different tomorrow we know well you see, it's, I've agonised about this because the best album ever made is not your favourite album. You know, that, no, it, no, it's, no. it's completely well, different. It's a bit like saying, I, I've interpreted as, and you're going to be so disappointed in my answer, no, but no, I've, no. In, I've interpreted as what's the most important album ever made. Oh, OK. Well, OK, right. yeah, fair enough. Because I, 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 I think it's what... Meaning what, the most influential? Yes, kind of. Yeah, that, all of them. So... Um, so, with at no great surprise at all. Oh, okay. oh fair enough. Yeah. Because is that the first? It, is that the first time anybody's chosen that, Mark? I think it is, isn't it? It is actually. It is. So there well, you go. Which is daringly original. <laughs> incredibly original. <laughs> because it just I don't. It just, I mean, it's it is before my time. But I read all your books, David. So I, I read about this thing. So, um, but it just seemed to me that. Uh, everything was leading up to this moment and then everything has led on from that moment. So uh, I, I was, I desperately was trying to think of something else to choose. And I was thinking it would be, it's so weary to pick Sergeant Pepper. Um, although I'm encouraged to find no one else has, has, has done it, but I, no. I, 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 I think no, that's it's, it's the most, it, 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 the way I interpreted the most important album ever made, has to be Sergeant Pepper, whether you like, you, you know, I think, you know, it is fantastic. I listened to it twice prior to choosing it. And I don't think I've done that in one day before ever, but I thought, no, I'm, I'm going to go with this. Control. I'm going to go with this it's, controversial choice. I'll tell you what, it's pretty good. It's, it it's is pretty good. Fantastic. And the other thing is that when you do listen to it, you tend to listen to it in, in a, as a, as a full sequence, you don't tend to drop in and listen to one track. You just think of yeah. it as a, as a, yeah. as a or, you know, one, one kind of particular piece. I think yeah. the other reason is because, excuse me one second, I too have been reading this. Oh, okay. All right. So I heard your conversation with David Mitchell and I was, yeah. over, and it, it's such a great book and he's such a great guest. So I think I was into that kind of 
late 60s kind of way of thinking anyway so when when the question was posed i thought well it's it has to it has to be that doesn't it i think so <laughs> yeah they, 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 uh, it's the best record ever made is kind of thing it all derives from smash hits really we used to spend hours in, in on smash hits office going i th the greatest record ever made is and then people would just say whatever It'd be something that came out last week. And it was such a lovely game because the idea was that there was only one right answer. Yes. And I know the right answer. And you yeah. go, and it's, you know, uh, she is beyond, beyond good and evil by the pop group or whatever. It yeah, was, whatever. You know? and, and what everybody else was just fundamentally wrong. It yeah. was hilarious. Because I mean, the I, way it works. But it, it's, a, it's a very good question because my favorite album is not controversial, is it? You know, everyone can have yeah. Val Dunican's Greatest Hits yeah. is a favorite album. Oh, absolutely. Album. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. saying it's the best album is, it is fighting talk. And yes. uh, so, <laughs> what has been the most commonly chosen album? Oh, out of God, I don't know. Well, we've only just repeat. started doing it, actually, haven't we? It's yes. only been a, a recent edition. I'll tell you what, we have found great accord on. When I, we ask people to talk, talk about the first record they ever bought, the number of people who've come back with ELO is quite remarkable. Because it's obviously a generational thing yes. of people of a, of a certain age, you know what I mean? And uh, people, uh, people who weren't around for the Beatles, but they kind of picked yes. up on the kind of post Beatles sound, yes. you know, yeah. the kind of eternal I, summer of 1975. Well, yes. I, saw them play, I saw them play for the Radio 2 gig in, in Hyde Park. Uh, the one that's after the proms, you know, uh, yeah, and yeah. it was, I, I mean, I think there was, a, my guess is there were a lot of backing tracks going on, but Jeff was yeah. singing certainly in the band with it. And it was astonishing. And the audience there, 95% had never seen them play live. You know, I'm, ma I'm making that statistic up, but you know, you know that that's true. Um, and it was, it was like, it was like, they were uh, it was devotional it was it was like they were at a religious service they never thought they would get a chance to see elo singing mr blue sky in hyde park with a blue sky uh you know it was it was terrific so i think uh, okay well that, that that's fair enough i think i love those uh, i love those people like like jeff lynn is classic example he's got just got so many songs that he can play 10 hits and then do another 10 hits which he'd forgotten about Yes. Which is such a rare thing to be able to do that, you know. Yeah, yeah. There aren't many well, people who've got that kind of record at all. So you, now I'm you're about I should have chosen that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're about to start playing pop records on the radio again, aren't you? Is this what I yes. read the other day? You're doing yes. a greatest hits show, is that the one? Yeah, I'm doing a, they asked me to say it's greatest hits radio. So I work for Bauer, who who well I work for Scala Radio, so that, that's the that's why I do my radio work. And Bauer are, as you know, a, a media empire. And they're one of their one of their uh, radio stations is called Greatest Hits Radio. And they asked me to do an album show. And I thought, well, that just sounds like a lot of fun, actually. So um, I don't need the radio work. I've got quite a lot anyway. So this will be my eighth. So I'm going to be doing eight radio shows a week. So that's probably too much, I suspect. But anyway, yeah. They, so they said, do you want to do an album show? And I thought. I'm surrounded by this stuff. I don't think I'll be playing too much from here. Uh, well, I, think, I, I think you, you should. should here. You should. You should. No, you'd be surprised how well that would go down. Yeah, better bring, bring me sunshine in, in between the ELO and the Beatles. I Sounds saw like your, you, you tweeted a fantastic picture. It was all the specials, wasn't it? And biographed by Bob Dylan. And you had a big pile of stuff you were going to yeah, choose from. It were deliberately uncategorized. It was literally a random pile that I'd taken out. I just made sure they were all facing the right way and then let people discuss. And in fact, the main thing they were discussing was that I, because they were stacked horizontally rather than vertically, the way David's are there and yours are marked at the back. But, but I, that doesn't make it great, you know, for a photograph, it just helps if they're horizontally. So I put yeah. them horizontally. But people were quite worked up with the fact that I was, I was storing them wrong. But the whole thing, yeah, was just a tease, really. Uh, yeah. to, so I think is, that'll be fun, you know. Is there any pop record you like to play on the radio that you have never played on the radio? Uh, that's a that's, oh, a, that's very... a good question. Meaning what, Dave? That it's it's too controversial I now to play, or I, I don't know. I don't know. I wasn't thinking of that particularly, but uh, you know, radio that's... programs have tend to have an agenda, don't they? they yes, they're either playing well, new stuff, or, or they're playing indie stuff, or they're playing incredibly well-known stuff. Uh, and, and certain uh, music suits, suits a certain time of day too, doesn't it? 
yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I think the only uh, I mean sometimes you have to argue hard for a particular track. So I uh, I put in a a very strong argument. This is back at Radio Two. I wanted to play Sea Cruise, and uh, which I think is is it one minute fifty something like that. Oh, the original Sea Cruise. Right? Yeah, Freddie did it. Sea Cruise. I can't remember. Is it Frankie Ford? Frankie Ford. That's right. Yes. Okay. Um, and uh, but I had to, you know I said this is why I want to play it. It sounds great. You know you can mix it into a whole bunch of things and it's very short. So you know I but I won. I kind of won most. I, I kind of won most battles. I think. I don't, right. As soon as we stop this, I will think of something that I've okay. definitely been wanting to play uh, and have never been allowed. But my guess is it would probably be a period piece. You know, it'd be something uh, that's so old I haven't been able. But when I was at Radio One, I even managed to play "Don't Let's Be Beastly" to the Germans by Noel Coward <laughs> because the aforementioned Piers Morgan had done that horrible thing on the front page about um, which you probably couldn't do now. I don't know. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Just be too. <laughs> <laughs> the thinnest ice, isn't it? <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. But anyway, so I, I'm going to think of that. Though. Now you've now I'm going to think about that and and worry about it that I should have come up with a a, a, a decent answer, something that I've no, don't worry, no, don't worry, no, no, we no, just slung that good. one in. You can think of it in time for your uh, your radio program, which is starting when? When uh, this is the, the afternoon's the, thing, isn't it? The album show is going to start September six, I think. Okay. Well, we'll look forward to that, Simon. Thank so, you. Are you on your way back to Suffolk? Yes, yes. As soon as I've finished speaking to you guys, I'm going to clear up the mess in this spare room. Um, <laughs> and uh, Thanks and so ahead. much for going. It's a tremendous effort to dig it all out. Absolutely. It was a, br a brilliant Terrific. bunch of stuff. It really do was you, riveting. Thank, do you come round and put it all away again for me? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Yeah, we'll come round, Simon. I was and read your old there. smash hits from Cover to Cover. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. nice. Anyway, okay. thanks, guys. Great to we'll see you. See you over a pint Many of thanks. cold beer when this bloody war's over. Cheers. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. See you.